Oh, rather gay. Not too much singing, a bit now and then. Mi fa pieta ma tu. Then I'll start dressing myself to go out. Presto non son più forte. I'll put on my best shift and drawers, let him have a good eye full out of that to make his Mickey stand firm. I'll let him know that if that's what he wanted, that his wife is fucked. Yes, and damn well fucked too. Up to my neck nearly, and not by him. Fine for six times hand running. There's the mark of his spunk on the clean sheet. I wouldn't bother to even iron it out. That ought to satisfy him. If you don't believe me, feel my belly unless I made him stand there and put him into me. I have a mind to tell him every scrap and make him do it in front of me. Serve him right, it's all his own fault if I am an adulteress. As the thing in the gallery said, Oh, much about it if that's all the harm ever we do in this veil of tears. God knows it's not much. Doesn't everybody? Only they hide it. I suppose that's what a woman is supposed to be there for, or he wouldn't have made us the way he did so attractive to men. Then if he wants to kiss my bottom, I'll drag open my drawers and bunch it right up in his face as large as life. He can stick his tongue seven miles up my hole as he's there, my brown part. Then I'll tell him I want one pound or perhaps 30 shillings. I'll tell him I want to buy underclothes. Then if he gives me that, well, he won't be too bad. I don't want to soak it all out of him like the other women do. I could have often written out a fine cheque for myself and write his name on it for a couple of pounds. A few times he forgot to lock it up. Besides, he won't spend it. I let him do it off and me behind. Provided he doesn't smear all my good drawers. Oh, I suppose that can't be helped. I'll do the indifferent one or two questions I'll know by the answers. When he's like that, he can't keep a thing back. I know every turn in him. I'll tighten my bottom well and let out a few smutty words. Smell rump or lick my shit at the first mad thing that comes into my head. Then I'll suggest about yes. Oh wait, no sunny night turn is coming. I'll be quite gay and friendly over it. Ah, but I was forgetting this bloody pest of a thing. Poof. You wouldn't know which to laugh or cry with such a mixture of plum and apple, no. I'll have to wear the old thing, so much the better. And he'll be more pointed. He'll never know whether he did it or not. There, that's good enough for you. And the old thing. Then I'll wipe him off me just like a business, his omission. Then I'll go out. I'll have a iron up at the ceiling. Where is she gone now? Make him want me. That's the only way. A quarter after. What an unearthly hour. I suppose they're just getting up in China now, combing out their pigtails for the day. We'll soon have the nuns ringing the Angelus. They have nobody coming in to spy their sleep except an odd priest or two for his night office. The alarm clock next door at the cock shout clapping and the brains out of itself. Let me see if I can throw it off. One, two, three, Four, five. What kind of flowers are those they invented like the stars? The wallpaper in Lombard Street was much nicer. That apron he gave me was like that, something only I, I only wore it twice. Better lower this lamp and try again so as I can get up early. I'll go to lambs there beside Finglater's and get them to send us some flowers to put about the place in case he brings him home tomorrow, today, I mean. No, 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 it's Friday. Friday's an unlucky day. First I want to do the place up some way. The dust grows in it, I think, while I'm asleep. Then we can have music and cigarettes. I can accompany him. First I must clean the keys of the piano with milk. What will I wear? Should I wear a white rose or those fairy cakes and Lipton's? I love the smell of a big rich shop 
at seven and a half pence a pound. Are the other ones with the cherries in them and the pinky sugar, eleven pence a couple of pounds. Of course, a nice plant for the middle of the table. I get that cheaper in weight. Where's this? I saw them not long ago. I love flowers. I'd love to have the whole place swimming in roses. God of heaven, there's nothing like nature. The wild mountains, then the sea, and the waves rushing, then the beautiful country with fields of oats and wheat, and all kinds of things, and all the fine cattle going about that would do your heart good to see rivers and lakes and flowers, all sorts of shapes and smells and colours springing up even out of the ditches, primroses and violets, nature it is. As for them saying there's no God, I wouldn't give a snap of me fingers for all their learning. Why don't they go and create something? I often ask them, atheists or whatever they call themselves, go and wash the cobbles off themselves first, then they go howling for the priest and they die in it. Why? Why? Because they're afraid of hell on account of their bad conscience. Ah yes, I know them well. Who was the first person in the universe before there was anybody that made it all? Who? Ah, that they don't know. Neither do I. So there you are. They might as well try to stop the sun from rising tomorrow. The sun shines for you. He said the day we were lying among the rhododendrons on Hove Head in the grey tweed suit and his straw hat. The day I got him to propose to me. Yes. First I gave him the bit of seed cake out of my mouth and it was leap year like now. Yes, 16 years ago. My God, after that long kiss I near lost my breath. Yes. He said I was a flower of the mountain. Yes. So we are flowers, all a woman's body, yes. That was the one true thing he said in his life. And the sun shines for you today, yes. That was why I liked him, because I saw he understood or felt what a woman is. And I knew I could always get around him. And I gave him all the pleasure I could, leading him on till he was asked me to say yes. And I wouldn't answer first, only looked out over the sea and the sky. I was thinking of so many things he didn't know of. Mulvey, Mr. Stanhope, and Esther, and Father, and old Captain Groves, and the sailors play all birds fly, and I say stoop and washing up dishes they called it on the pier and the sentry in front of the governor's house with the thing round his white helmet poor devil half roasted and the Spanish girls laughing in their shawls and their tall cones and the auctions in the morning the Greeks and the Jews and the Arabs and the devil knows who else from all the ends of Europe and Duke Street and the foul market all tucking outside Larby Sharon's and the poor donkeys slipping half asleep and the vague fellas in the cloaks asleep in the shade on the steps and the big wheels of the carts and the bulls and the old castle thousands of years old yes and those handsome moors all in white and turbans like kings asking you to sit down in their little bit of a shop and run the, when the old windows of the posadas glancing eyes a lattice hid for a lover to kiss the iron and the wine shops half open at night and the castanets and the night we miss the boat at Algicarus the watchman going about serene with his lamp and oh that awful deep down torrent oh and the sea the sea crimson sometimes like fire and the glorious sunsets and the fig trees in the alameda gardens yes and all the queer little streets and pink and blue and yellow houses and the rose gardens and the jessamine and geraniums and cactuses and gibraltar as a girl where I was a flower of the mountain. Yes, when I put the rose in my hair like the Andalusian girls used to shall I wear a red. Yes, and how he kissed me under the Moorish wall. And I thought, 
When I swell him as a mother, and then I asked him with my eyes to ask again, yes. And then he asked me, would I, yes, to say yes, my mountain flower. And first I put my arms around him, yes, and drew him down to me so he could feel my breath or perfume, yes. And his heart was going like mad, and yes, I said, yes, I will. say that the wait staff here, not only beautiful, but bright. And that's good. That's a good thing. And now, a man who is as much responsible for this as James Joyce himself, <laughs> Danny, come, come step up. Even uh, Joyce doesn't get better than that, really. Big, big warm applause for this guy. <laughs> Really, really great. Thank you. And a, a big applause for Simon Roper, who's come down today and just an amazing job. Uh, uh, terrific. This is great right here. So Larry Cole, thank you very much. Thank you. And Barbara Hammond, the other part of this, she's been with the help. Uh, I guess I kind of have to bring attention to the fact that one person who is not here right now is Colin McCann. I know some of us already know why. Yesterday he was the proud recipient of the Impact Award in Dublin, which is huge for Let the Game Go Spin. But we do kind of have to slag him because like 100,000 euro. I mean, come on, why couldn't he, couldn't he just get here by this afternoon at least or something? But no, we miss him. He misses us. I know he, he already spoke uh, last night to me. Wishes he, he will be here next year, but he doesn't write another major selling book and win more awards or something like that, but he will be here next year. We miss him today. But the best part of this is this chapter of the day is called Cyclops, which means there's no patch on this cocktail hour and we buy the drinks. So enjoy it. It is our anniversary after all. Take advantage of it. Have fun. Thanks very much for all the readers. Thank you guys. Another great year. This is my favorite year on, my favorite day on the Sunshine of the Year. Fantastic. Great job.